This video is sponsored by Amran. I think November 13th was the date I moved here. Essentially, two years ago, I brought this desk for my parents, gave it a little makeover, and now this is what it looks like in 2023. This year, I've managed to change a few things here and there to make it even better and essentially transform it as my taste evolves throughout the years. Most of the items you see here have been with me for a while now, and I think I'm in a position where I can properly tell you what's worth getting and what's not on this desk. So here's the ultimate desk setup makeover in 2023 after two years of owning it. Let me get something out of the way. This fridge here was given to me by my rep at Red Bull Canada, the girl that sends me to the Canadian Grand Prix, to Austria in order to drive on the Red Bull ring and so on. She pretty much fills my fridge when needed, so that's nice. Anyways, no, I didn't buy this. I don't even know if you can get one. I just happened to be lucky enough to have Red Bull on our side. But yeah, this is one of the latest addition this year. It goes so well on this desk. It really hides that particular corner and fills the left side of my workspace. I think it really balances it out with the fact that my new PC sits on the opposite end. This here's finally my brand new NZXT H6 RGB Flow. I've waited for this case for so long. At the moment, we have this brand deal going on with NZXT regarding some Instagram content, but essentially, they sent us this case, their latest Kraken, and a power supply along with some fans. I of course had to dig out of my pockets to buy the CPU and motherboard. Turns out my old motherboard is actually broken and well, I was rocking my 3080 Ti on the second PCIe slot. So you know what, I told myself that it was the perfect time for a new motherboard, might as well just upgrade my CPU while I'm at it. Pretty much what I did last Sunday, I took my whole build apart and spent some time putting this new one together. It's honestly always fun building a new PC. Now this here is a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with 128 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and my same old RTX 3080 Ti. I will point out that I know a lot of people have been having issues pairing this CPU with 128 gigs of RAM. I haven't had any issues yet but my clock speeds are have what they should be. Regardless, it's a lot of power, but now that I'm a DaVinci user and since I mainly spend time coding on my Mac, I mainly configured this PC to handle video and photo editing. Through the IOs, I now connect the new Focusrite Scarlett Solo 4th Gen. I upgraded my audio interface because I was told this here had cleaner preamps. Basically, preamps give inputs the amount of gain necessary without inducing a lot of noise or distortion into the signal. And because I'm using a Shure SM7B with a cloud lifter, I've sort of always wanted to clean my audio a bit more towards the mids. I also love the fact that my XLR input is all the way at the back. I was starting to worry about my cable always being bent. I think this made it possible for a cleaner front panel look too. Here, you've got a line instrument input, 48 volts of phantom power, their air feature, input levels, monitor outputs, a direct monitoring, and a headphone input with finally its own gain knob. Literally, audio-wise, this is all I've ever needed on my end. In the back, aside from connecting my microphone, it connects my monitor speakers, speakers that finally sit on proper stands. Yes, I know, this was very much an upgrade I needed. Last year, I had these sitting on my GrooveMate desk shelf system. It wasn't the most optimal sound setup ever. I know I needed a proper solution to fix that, so I got these Kanto SP6 HD desktop speaker stands. I have these holding up my 3-4 to four year old audio engine A5 Pluses. Honestly, for speakers that came out 10 years ago, these are incredibly solid. Compared to my Kara Ks at home, they are a tiny bit different in terms of the way it delivers its bass and the tone of vocals. However, for speakers that I've already invested all this time with and have been paid off multiple times, upgrading to something like the Rocket G5s or the Yamaha HS5s is currently not worth it for me. Yes, I think I'll gain slightly in sound, but it's honestly not a priority. These are still going strong, they deliver great sound for my edits, they work well via Bluetooth if needed, and they are simple to control. Plus, they still look good and make the setup look great. 
Sitting in the middle, we have my new Groovemate test shelf system. If you guys have been watching the videos, you know my last shelf was all scuffed. I had scratched it a couple of years ago when we were reviewing a monitor, so honestly, instead of hiding it with my GT4 RS figure, about 8 months ago, I thought it was time to get a new one. This one here has more of a walnut color to it, so it really matches my countertop quite nicely and I do love the way this one is sorted. I like the spacing the dividers offer and I think the metal element of this piece adds a really nice touch of contrast to the setup. In here, I have all my books and notes that I have quick access to. It also sort of helps me hide all the mess from the monitor arms and the cables from the interface. It's been such a great original addition to the desk and this one seems to be a well. I will say the same thing about my Audio Technica's ATH M50Xs. Great headphones, I think they are worth every single dollar you pay for them. However, at home I've been using my III's TMA2's wireless headphones and I couldn't stop myself from getting a similar second pair. Not only has this become one of my favorite pairs of headphones, but Jan likes them as well. So much that it became the main pair he brings when we go on trips. Now these aren't totally the same exact headphones I have. These are the TMA2 Move wireless headphones. These are also modular headphones. III will allow you to shop different components to essentially create the perfect headphone for yourself. Mine have the S10 wireless diaphragm with the H03 high comfort leather headband, the E04 over ear leather cups, and C05 straight 1.5 adapter with a protective pouch. At 227 grams, they sit super nicely on me. I've always liked the sound these outputs, especially since they are also made for DJs, so because I'm often mixing videos and tracks for our videos, I thought these could come in super handy in the studio. On top of that, these are wireless which can come in handy as well. Wireless just like my G903 which is such an incredible mouse. It's aged so freaking well on my desk but you can tell the body is starting to degrade quite a bit. It's also starting to feel a bit on the heavier side from all the other mouses I've used this year which is why I've been wanting to replace it with the G502X. The original G502 is probably one of the best selling mouses of all time so I had to give their new one a try. With new switches, Finally USB-C, a new rubberized finger rest, a matte finish and these new PTFE gliders, it was enough for me to try this one out. Now I bought the plus version simply to showcase the RGB feature for this video but you can very much get the non plus if you want to avoid the RGB. Shape wise this very much reminds me of my MX Master 3S minus the weight of course and so for a mouse that has this much customization and flexibility I was more than happy to pair it with my mode keyboard. These two peripherals of mine mainly get life from either my new Amron 300C or my BenQ monitor light bar. About a couple of weeks ago I got to replace my 150C with my 300C and not long ago I also switched the Aperture Light Dome SE for the Light Dome 2. Reason why is because I went from the Amron 200X to a much more powerful Amron 150C. So I wanted the diffuser to be larger so it could diffuse the extra light and make it softer. Both of these lights have very similar specs like a 360 degree HSI full color control, a 2500 to 7500 CCT range, plus and minus green and magenta adjustments, night effects options ranging from fire to TV, a built in umbrella holder and stepless dimming from 0 to 100. Like most of the products, they of course also connect to their Citus Link app, an app that allows you to modify all their settings and set up a master node that can control all of the lights accordingly. Differences between the 150C and 300C are simple things like the lumen output, bare bulb beam angle, and slightly different power supplies. These are lights that make it incredibly easy to light up a space. I mean, I have Amron products everywhere in the studio, including the Amron Spotlight SE, which played a big role as to why I unmounted the 150C. You see this here is an accessory design for the 150C and 300C. It's a spotlight that's super easy to attach to the light source with a 19 degree and a 36 degree lens available and a whole different combinations of drop-in patterns you can mount this to. 
for portability the LED can also be paired with their Lito Mini SE so for us this is sort of a light source that will be living a bit more outside the studio something portable easy to move around here and there and ready to use on the go as for tech that remains unchanged obviously we talked about these bookshelf speakers I'm still rocking the same BenQ light bar on the same dual ultra wide monitor setup a monitor setup that still doesn't break my neck and is hard to beat these are two monitors I've had for a while now, especially the 34-inch Dell U3417W. It's been four years I've been rocking this monitor and it's been going strong. The same thing with my 40-inch LG ultra-wide monitor. This thing is a beast. It has a built-in hub within that can connect the MacBook, some storage and peripherals if needed. I went with a 34-inch on top and a 40-inch at the bottom to really divide my workspace in a way that would increase productivity for me. I really thought it was overkill at first but really it's been the perfect amount of screen real estate. It really allows me to sort my workflow and get some work done, especially while typing on the same old keyboard. I mean I think you can tell I've been using this a lot because this thing needs some deep cleaning. This was my very first mode keyboard and ever since I got this we've gotten a few other ones in the office. I absolutely love this keyboard, I mean it feels so right. I love that it sits on this Harbour London wool felt pad with my Harbour London mouse pad. Two products that seem to be doing really well surprisingly. I say that because I often eat here so yeah. The leather on the mouse pad doesn't seem to be bending too much towards the corners. It seems stable and still delivers a consistent glide to my mouses. Next to all of this, I still have my creative console sitting here. I mainly use it as a prop now. I'm starting to get used to my Blackmagic console at home, so that's why. But yeah, around this area nothing changed much except the fridge of course. I mean my plan got bigger, like much bigger. I also changed the angle of the small rig arm that helps me film my tech talks. And of course we've got my Google Home speaker and gantry desk light. Holding my mic is the same Rode Arm PSA One Plus I had within last year's video. It hovers over some Porsche magazines I often get in the mail. I think it goes well with my GT4 RS figure. Towards the right, I'm still rocking the same Kingston dock. This thing is unbeatable. I absolutely love it. I think its modularity and size are extremely convenient. This goes well with my GrooveMate Walnut wooden pen cup. Comes in handy when I decide to whip out a book and start writing. All of this still sits on my Carl Bike countertop. I don't know if I'll ever upgrade this to be honest. These have gotten so expensive over time it's insane. I'm happy to announce that for the price at least they do last. I mean this has been here for the past like 2 years I believe. The wood is still going strong. The scratches only add a character and design to it. It's not warped thank god. I do think the autonomous legs and frame play a major part in that. It's of course because the middle frame really supports most of the weight especially when it comes to the monitors. And even at that this whole table still goes up and down with no issues. As for my drawers, a bit scuffed up, sucks but it is what it is. I remember when these ones costed like $70, good times. Anyways, well I took the time to properly sort them inside. I bought some of these Amazon containers and organizers to help me sort this mess. Very much recommend these. Next to the drawers still sits my gantry floor light except this time around we added a plant. This thing was so small last year and now that it's grown this much I decided to pair it with my light source. It helps me hide some of the mess in here and really allows me to add some greenery to this side. The rest like the stuff that goes up on the wall hasn't changed much. These are frames we made ourselves and we tried selling them just for people to have them really. The only true addition to the wall surrounding the setup has to be my catch all shelf. I use it for my keys, all my admin related documents and to hang all of the badges from events we've been at up to now. I love looking at the setup. I love sitting down at 7.30 in the morning and just work away. It of course helps the fact that I got a proper chair to do that. Like I'm able to literally glue my butt to this chair for 3 to 4 hours at the time. It's bad but this thing has been nothing but comfortable. For a chair that's almost 2 years old and gets used and abused, it looks pretty darn good. The cushion on the seat still feels good. The material on the backrest has aged well. It still makes weird sounds though.
whatever, I got used to it. The important thing to know about this Herman Miller and body is that I truly think it's a fantastic chair. The only issue is the price, but it fixed my weird shoulder blade pain and I don't have any tailbone pain when sitting on this for hours upon end. The only thing I do wish it had was a headrest, I mean it has all the quirks and features like height adjustment, different types of armrest adjustments, lumbar support adjustment, tension adjustment for the backrest. It has a lot of stuff that allow you to really personalize your sitting experience but the headrest would have been nice. Regardless, it really is like the king of chairs at the moment, which is why this desk might never see a different chair. All of these are items that I've been using for quite some time now. Yes, some I just got, I will admit that, but a lot of these have been here with us for almost two years now. Next year, around the same time, I'm thinking I'll make a very similar update again. I am planning on expanding the office, so I'm sure some things might move around and change. There's always new tech coming out and when it gets paired with my desk, it pretty much becomes like a testing facility because it gets used and abused. I hope you liked this video, I hope you liked seeing my work desk, to be honest the one at home I mainly use it for coding, which is why next week we will be reviewing the latest M3 MacBook for developers so stay tuned for that. I will catch you all soon, take care.